Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here, and today I'm here with one of my new favorite little cameras. This is the Panasonic GH5. Um, there's a lot of great things about this camera, but one of the really cool features uh, that basically persuaded me to pick it up is the fact that it now is one of the many cameras that has in-body sensor stabilization, which means that the sensor itself is actually stabilized and can allow you to stabilize uh, lenses that don't have built-in stabilization inside the lens. However, there is a, a, a few little tricks and things that you need to know about getting the in-body stabilization to act properly with your full manual or vintage lenses when you adapt them onto the GH5. So like I said guys, the Panasonic GH5 is uh, one of the hottest cameras right now, especially in the mirrorless small form factor sort of market. Um, and I was impressed enough by it to actually go ahead and pick it up. It is by far the smallest camera that I own, and I was always kind of skeptical of Micro Four Thirds and mirrorless, but it does have a ton of advantages. And one of the big ones was that in-body stabilization, meaning the sensor itself is stabilized and physically moves inside the body, allowing you to add full manual uh, lenses actually from various different other lens mounting systems and put them onto uh, the GH5 with use of an adapter. So on here what I have is I have a Rokinon 50 millimeter lens and I'm using a Metabones speed booster which is one of the more common uh, adapters uh, to attach this to the Micro Four Thirds mount of the GH5. Now this lens is full manual, meaning there are no electronic contacts, there's no electronic control. The, the iris control is all manual right here, and the focus also all manual right here. Uh, so this will not work with autofocus or anything like that, but usually I don't use that. Um, but the fact that I can use this lens on this camera, uh, adapt it to it, and then still have it be a stabilized lens, meaning I can go handheld and get some pretty decent results um, because of that in-body sensor stabilization is a huge, huge bonus. Um, now, like I said, there are a few little things that you need to know in order to get this to work properly. Now, whenever you attach a, uh, a non-electronic or a full manual lens to the camera, obviously the camera and lens are not talking to each other. So the camera, in order to do the sensor stabilization, needs you to manually input what the focal length is of the lens that you have on there so that it can react appropriately. Um, and so when you have something like this on and you boot up the GH5, you're going to be prompted with a screen that asks you to input the focal length. And you can go in and you can get really down to like the tenth there uh, in terms of your focal length. And I've seen a lot of people who are actually kind of confused about what you should actually put in there. Uh, for example, this is a lens that's made for full frame but the Micro Four Thirds sensor has a crop to it. So do you put in the actual focal length in terms of full frame 35 millimeter or do you put in after the crop factor? And the answer actually surprised me a little bit. I found a video from Panasonic that I'll link down to below for you guys. Um, but they said you actually input the focal length of the lens as printed on the lens. You don't take that sensor crop factor into account. You go ahead and input the actual focal length of the lens. Um, and the reason is because even though a 50 millimeter lens here might be acting like a 100 millimeter on a Micro Four Thirds because of that two times crop factor, it doesn't mean that it's actually a 100 millimeter lens. The way the light is bending, the way the light is being passed through all the elements, it is still a 50 millimeter lens. So you wanna input 50 millimeter. Now, that's only if you're adapting it and not using something like a speed booster. Uh, so the Metabone speed booster actually has a glass element in there which actually squeezes down um, the, the light circle coming out of the back of the lens and actually gives you some of that, uh, some of that loss of focal length uh, back, you gain it back with speed boosting. Um, and so there you actually do need to do some calculations. And what you would do is you take the crop reduction of your focal reducer, whether it be a Metabone speed booster or any other brand, and you apply that to the focal length of your lens. 
and then that is the number that you are going to input into the IBIS system when it prompts you in order to get it to stabilize that lens properly. So I know that's a lot of math and a lot of calculations and you know it all depends on which speed booster you have, your 0.71 or 0.64x. Um, and so what I've gone ahead, guys, is I've put together an entire spreadsheet and chart with tons and tons of focal lengths and what their effective focal length will be after the crop, what you should input for IBIS, what their effective focal lengths will be with various speed boosters and focal reducers, uh, specifically using Metabones as the examples. And I have made that publicly available for you to download. So there'll be a link in the description below. Please feel free to go ahead and download that little cheat sheet. Um, and hopefully that'll help you guys if you ever need to figure out what you need to input for the manual lens that you're using on your Panasonic GH5. Uh, please feel free to share it with anybody who might find the information interesting as well. And if this did indeed help you guys out, please go ahead and give this video a like and make sure you uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button and notification bell so that you get notified as soon as I have videos released, whether they be tips and tricks like this, gear reviews, or just fun stuff. So guys, go ahead and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.